Good morning. The lesson from God's Word today is from the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. The writer reminds us that there's a time for everything and a season for every activity of it under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to give, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And then down to the 14th verse. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. Pray with me before I preach. Give me grace, Father, to rightly interpret your word uh, this morning. That we may be edified in our spirits, challenged in our lives. Have a deeper understanding of how you operate and how you are choosing to operate in and through us. In these days, in Jesus' name, amen. June is the month of wedding bells and I do's. And during June, there's a bride anywhere, scarcely a bride anywhere, who would dare walk down the aisle without four seemingly necessary things. No one seems to know why they are necessary or even how the custom began. But almost every bride will want to have something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue on her person. My wife did. <laughs> Do you know what Ann's blue item was? <laughs> it was an old blue dance hall garter. <laughs> something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Every bride seems to want an item of each. Somehow the wedding is more meaningful because of them. I wonder why. Did they ever stop to think that perhaps it's because life needs these ingredients to have meaning? Life does need some things that are old. Truths tried and proven in the past to give us a foundation on which to build. Also, we need the new to keep life fresh and growing. And we must borrow from the ideas and experiences of others. We can't think of everything for ourselves. Finally, 
even the blue times of life can serve to help us appreciate the good and happy times. If your life is void of the old, new, borrowed, or blue, then likely it's not complete. Now, all of this is consistent with the teaching of Holy Scripture. The fact is that the Lord Jesus himself used all of these things in his life, the most meaningful life that was ever lived. If we're seeking to pattern our lives after his then we need to choose some things old, new, borrowed, and blue. I'm confident that Jesus never forgot the past. We see this in almost every encounter he had with persons where he referred to some past event or saying Jesus was not totally tied to the past, but he never forgot the values that came down to him from the past. So many people today get so involved in the new things of life that they reject the old altogether. Indeed, very few seem to want to be accused of being old-fashioned. And while I guess I like to be seen as progressive as the next person, I fear this complete rejection of the old values and the old standards of life, especially as this true in spiritual values. And standards. Speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, God affirms that the people have forgotten him. And this is how he describes they have forgotten him. You have stumbled from the ancient past. Cannot this same thing be said of our generation? To a degree, we may have forgotten God. We may have strayed from the ancient past of our faith. Sisters and brothers, I'd like to see us return to many of those old ways. I know we can never go back to the good old days. But there are some things that we could turn back to and I think should turn back to. I'd like to see us return to the place where we depended more on God than we do now. It's in vogue today to be completely independent. We don't dare admit we need anyone, even God. Hasn't always been that way. Time was when a person felt no shame whatsoever in confessing our need of God. It was That was not a sign of weakness. That was a sign of strength. The reason I believe why the world is in such a mess today is because we have chosen not to depend on God. We tried to work out things for ourselves and look whether that has gotten us. We need to return to the ancient path of dependence upon God. I'd like to see us return to the old way of appreciating people more than things. In days gone by, a person 
was worth something simply because they were a person. We appreciated them because of their personhood. Not so today. People today have been degraded to the status of a serial number or a category. Our only importance is measured by our skills and our bank accounts. We used to say John Brown is a carpenter by trade, but his hobby is gardening. Nowadays, some firms might express it this way, 857-674037, occupation A5783, hobby BS497T. So often, humans are not valued because they are a soul, or a person, but by their serial numbers. Likewise, as far as many are concerned, people are dollar mark. Their only interest is in us is in how much money we have and how much money they can get out of us. Our primary value to them is monetary. We need to get back to the old values of a person as a precious child of God, created in his own image. And I'd like to see us get back to the old loyalty to the church. Time was when the church meant something to most people. I'd like to see us get back to that. There are a lot of things about the good old days that I'll be to tell you the truth. I'm glad they're gone forever. But I'm sad that this modern world, we have so often forgotten God and fallen from the ancient paths of dependence upon God, holding people in high esteem simply because they are children of God, and giving a high degree of loyalty to the church as the family of God. To make life really meaningful, we must have something old. Secondly, but to appreciate the past does not mean that we reject all that is new. Certainly the Lord Jesus didn't do that. Indeed, he came to inaugurate a new covenant the New Testament. The master could never be accused of try, being tied to the past. Indeed, some reject, objected to him because they thought he was too modern. Jesus realized that life was complete when it contained both old and new. And speaking of the kingdom of heaven, he reminded them, a wise man brings forth treasures, both old and new. We need to be willing to accept the new if it is an improvement over the old. If we only look to the past, we will never make any progress. That's relevant in every arena of life. It's relevant in the church today. That's why I'm glad when I 
see new people in the church. So often a church, if it's not careful, can become an exclusive club. Our own little crowd with which we are quite satisfied. Afraid of new people who might have new ideas, who might upset things, who might discombobulate the church. But beloved The church needs new people. We need to go after them, not only because they need Jesus in the church, but also because the church needs them. When Jesus lost Judas, one of the original 12, what did the disciples do? They went out and found somebody to replace him. Above all, let's focus on the new life. Let the old sin and disappointment and hard feelings and bitternesses be cast away. Let God continue to work to make us new men and new women in Christ Jesus. Let us walk, as Paul says, in newness of life. Let a new spirit be shown in our lives. The old ways aren't always adequate for the new life. Life also needs the new in order to have meaning and purpose. Something old something new, something borrowed. This is the next needful thing. Think about this. Jesus was not against borrowing. His birthplace was borrowed. The donkey he rode on was borrowed. The boat from which he preached on the Sea of Galilee was borrowed. The tomb in which they laid him after the crucifixion was borrowed. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus instructed us, from him that would borrow from you, Turn not away. Friends, there's nothing unchristian about borrowing. Sometimes we may need to do more borrowing in our personal lives. For instance, we need to borrow some of the characteristics of the Lord Jesus. It's true wisdom to try to emulate his life. And there's nothing wrong in trying to be like more mature and experienced Christians either. What are some of the characteristics? Of successful churches... They're willing to try some new things. Some will succeed. Some may fail. But they never know until they try. They're willing to pay the high price to succeed. Old ideas, new concepts, and some borrowed characteristics are needful in flight is to have fresh meaning. One more thing is needed to make life complete. We need the blue. The times of sadness, the times of trial and tribulation and trouble in life. 
Jesus had his trials and tribulations and troubles, but he always came through them stronger. In fact, all the stronger because of them. The temptation in the desert made Jesus stronger to serve God. The temptation to forsake his calling in life and the cross that was part of that prepared him to prove that if we stick with the gold and stick with God, the cause will accomplish its God-intended purpose. Jesus saw some of his disciples desert him. But those who stayed made him sure that he could count on them. These are times of trial in all of our lives. Sickness, problems, death, disgrace, disappointment. All of these come to all of us. We can let them lick us or we can let them strengthen us. It all depends on how we respond. We can let a situation lick us, but we can let that same situation strengthen us. When we turn to the people in the church that are dependable, we learn who they are. We know that these are the ones who truly love the Lord, truly love the church, and truly are going to be there to the end. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul, a man accustomed to disappointment, but one who had faith enough to be strengthened by it. He wrote, Now therefore, will I gladly glory in my troubles that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in troubles, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Truly, these down times can be used by God to make us, uh, make for us a more meaningful, exciting, even a more pleasant life. Now, bride wants all of these things. Any person should. Any church needs the old and the new, the borrowed and the blue. Our Lord's life proved that all are necessary to make life meaningful. Good news, good news, good news. Accept them all. Accept them all. And your life will be meaningful too. Father, thank you for this lesson from life. Based on your word, learn from your word. Teach us at this stage in our lives to learn these lessons so that we will live out our victory, our last days, joyfully, meaningfully and victoriously, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, I hope you heard some good news today. hope you heard some encouraging news today. And if you did, good. And
And if you want to hear some